Hello and welcome to the EFR Presents review of the Friendship is Magic comic issue 7, part 3 in the Nightmare Rarity Saga. Before we get started guys, spoiler alert, I will be covering the whole comic here, so if you haven't had a chance to read it yet, go out and give it a look, and then head on back. You know, Rarity can't seem to catch a break with all things Nightmare, can she? First she misses out on Nightmare Night, and now she's absent from her own comic as she spends the whole issue possessed by evil Nightmare forces. Looking at the cover, this promises to be a pretty exciting issue. We've got our main characters on the moon, about to throw down with some evil monsters, I mean, how can you go wrong? Visually, the hues of the main six stand out great against the predominantly purple-gray colors of the scene, and show just how well the inking and coloring are handled in this issue. With both the antagonists and the setting being mostly monochromatic, it could easily lead to some very confusing scenes, but the panels never come across muddled or dull, with both characters and action being clearly defined. This cover is a bit of a tease though, because the epic battle it promises lasts a whooping three pages. We open the issue as Celestia prepares Ponyville for an attack by the Nightmares. You know, why is it always Ponyville? I'm sure Celestia abandoning Canterlot right now must make her real popular with her subjects. I do like the derpy appearance on the front page, as well as a lot of the little touches, including two certain ponies talking to Mare Mare. There's really no way for them to throw in these little bits of canon or nonce to the fans when they're on the moon, and I think they strike a nice balance of not cramming the scene within jokes. We're also treated to a token CMC appearance before Nightmare Moon's silhouette appears in the sky. Except we know that's not Nightmare Moon, because we learned that in the last issue. You know, this scene would have worked a lot better as a cliffhanger to issue 6, with Luna's decision to take Rarity's place left a mystery, and keeping the Nightmare Rarity reveal a surprise. Not to say I didn't love the way issue 6 left off, but this opening just doesn't work for me. Speaking of things not working, I feel there's a big problem with the Nightmare Rarity character and her ties in with the series' first villain. By having this mysterious Nightmare Force just take control of a host, it completely breaks the Nightmare Moon character. Luna was corrupted by feelings of jealousy and resentment and became Nightmare Moon, representing the power of those emotions and how they corrupted a kind soul. The main six elements are established as a foil to these feelings, and indeed more powerful. This establishes why Nightmare Moon, being a creation of her own emotions, could be turned back by the elements of harmony. At its core, Nightmare Moon was a being of her own agency, showing that feelings and emotions have very real power. I mean, this is the point of the show, it's in the title. And making her this boogeyman character turns the very relatable and nuanced concept of inner strife into a generic good guy, bad guy dynamic. Jumping back to the plot, we cut to the moon where the main six briefly battle Nightmare Rarity's minions, with Rarity sadly absent from the combat. You know, I'm glad they gave this character such a dramatic reveal just to have her sit around. I always find passive villains the most threatening. Once the dust settles, Luna gets Deus Ex Machina back to Ponyville and her heroes get thrown into the dungeon while Spike gets thrown into the second half of the comic. After we watch our heroes get locked up and Fluttershy befriend a grotesquely cute moon rabbit that clearly won't become important in the next issue, we're treated to two solid pages of Spike walking back to find his friends. We also have some exposition from Nightmare Rarity explaining why Rarity was chosen as a host. Though this seems like more wasted time when we're not seeing her do anything to earn that villain moniker. In fact, explaining why Rarity was chosen as a host brings up more questions. Why did all the main six experience similar nightmares at the same time? Was Nightmare or Applejack really a backup plan? Why did the Nightmare Forces wait until now? Why not attack non-superhero ponies if you can just imprison them on the moon? Do these forces want anything or are they just evil? What's their motivation and why should I care? Thankfully, things pick back up when Spike infiltrates the castle, but is quickly discovered and faces an illusion where Rarity, seemingly better, asks Spike to be her king. For me, this is the highlight of the issue, and the temptation Spike faces reminds me of the scene with Rainbow Dash and the Shadow Bolts from the Elements of Harmony episode. Spike of course sees through the false Rarity, and we leave off with a similar cliffhanger to issue 6, with Nightmare Rarity revealing herself once again. It kinda loses some of the impact the second time around. Now, I don't think this is a bad issue, but I'm a little disappointed with how they chose to run with the Nightmare Rarity character, and it really feels like they're trying to copy the same tone as the Chrysalis plot, which I really feel only works as well as it did because so much of the comedy revolved around the CMC, which just feels more natural. But how does our villain measure up? Our Nightmare Rarity is supposedly Nightmare Moon reincarnate, but I don't recall Nightmare Moon's introduction going, from this moment forth the night will last forever, bit of a pickle, isn't it? Other than that, the characters are expressive and well-written. It was cool to see Spike get a good portion of the issue to himself, and Spike's run-in with Nightmare Rarity was well-executed, though I really feel they could have used more time to develop the scene. Overall, the issue sets up a lot of elements for what promises to be an exciting climax. 
Will our villains be more menacing in the finale? Will a Ponyville subplot take up half the comic? We'll find out in issue 8. See you next time.